Hey everyone. So if you saw my last video, um, you see that I was planning on doing an overnighter this weekend, but due to weather and some other circumstances, I ended up canceling it. So I figured I'd take the opportunity while my backpack is all packed full of gear um, to show you guys all the gear I was going to carry. So a lot of people have requested that I show you know all the contents that I would take out on a typical trip. So we're going to do that here. And uh, to maximize the usefulness of this video, any of the gear that I've done a video on, when I show that, I'll annotate in um, a link to the video that I've done. And then any of the gear that I haven't done a video on, if you guys are interested in it, uh, write a comment and let me know, you know what things you'd like to see reviews of or anything like that. So uh, we'll get cracking. So right here, uh, it's the REI Flash 45 backpack. Um, I have done a video on that, I'll link that in here, and I'm just going to kind of work uh, from the outside in just because I think it'll be easier. Um, starting out, I'll do, this is the stuff I carry outside of my pack, but that I do have with me. I've always, well not always, but I have my trekking poles because in this case I was going to use a tent that uses them. I often have my trekking poles, duct tape, and um, medical tape up on there. So, got the trekking poles. Also in my pockets, I've got my keys, which the only notable thing there is I have a miniature flashlight that, oh look at that, looks like the batteries are out. Um, and I've got a Victoria Knox Rambler, a little knife with some useful tools on it. I've got my wallet, chapstick, maps, and then I typically carry my uh, Spyderco Sage as well. So that's all the stuff I carry outside of the pack, you know, in my pockets and whatnot. Um, now we'll dig into the pack. Okay, two other things to mention before we get into the pack. Um, I also carry in my pocket my mobile phone, obviously. Um, so I've got that, which works as a camera for filming or taking pictures and oftentimes uh, GPS uh, maps and things like that as well. Um, and the second thing to note, I will also, as we go through all the gear here, I will, in the video description, in order, I will list the weight of all the gear, because I know people are going to ask me about it. So, let's get going here. Um, so, on the outside mesh pocket here on the flash, um, this here is a collapsible dog bowl for Jack that he can use as a water bowl or a food bowl. Oftentimes, I'll put this in his backpack, his rough wear backpack. Um, but for this particular trip, I carried it. Uh, I had a water bottle, at least at least one liter. Uh, only took a liter in this case because um, there was so much snow runoff that I knew I was going to have ample water sources. This is just Jack's leash. Oh, now he thinks he's going on a walk. This over here is my. Uh, Rain gear, rain jacket, and rain pants. Kept on the outside of the pack so they're easy to access. And then this here was my food bag. I'll show you the contents of this uh, later on in the video. And the only other thing on the outside of the pack, uh, I'll probably leave it on for now. This here is a uh, closed cell foam pad just rolled up. Um, I carry that be, uh, actually for Jack to have in the tent, um, and I need to figure out a better solution because he obviously doesn't need a full length uh, pad, but anyway, that's why I had that. It's pretty lightweight, um, and it gives him something to keep him off the cold ground. So now let's dig on inside the pack here. So we'll start with stuff in the top lid um, pocket back here. This is, I kind of just keep a random assortment of things here. This here is that uh, Sawyer Mini water filter. In this case, I brought the, this is the stuff that comes with it. This is a straw that you can connect to it so you can like drink right out of the stream. And then this is one of the little uh, collapsible bottles that comes with it, which I don't really plan on using because according to the reviews, they're not that reliable, but I, I carried it in this case. And then that way as an emergency, I can carry more water if I need to. So water filtration system there. And like I was saying, it, it indexes to screw on these uh, soda bottle style bottles. So that's why I had this particular bottle. Um, I always have some form of headlamp. This is a new one I've been playing with. It's more lightweight. This is a Petzl E-Lite. 
this is just the little case for it, which I don't really need the case. Um, and then here is just the little light has various red strobing, white strobing, and then different powers on uh, the normal white as well. It's a handy little uh, headlamp. For as small as it is, it packs quite a punch. This is my ultralight first aid kit, which I've done a video on. Um, so I carry that in the top of the pot pack for easy access and because it has a sill nylon bag, um, you know, it doesn't need to be in a waterproof section of the pack. This here is just kind of like a little random assortment, little tiny bottles of stuff that I'll need. I've got sunscreen, camp soap, hand sanitizer, spare matches you can see in there, uh, insect repellent, and then the other bottles in here are Aquamira uh, for a backup water treatment in case my filter were to fail. And sometimes I'll take the Aquamira as my primary uh, water treatment. So I was camp planning on camping above tree line, which usually means rocky soil and high winds. So I have some spare stakes here. These are some titanium shepherd hook stakes, um, just because they tend to drive into the rocky ground a little easier. And then I have extra stakes to do some guy outs and stuff like that, or if I need to. Toothbrush, toothpaste, and my spoon. This is a titanium long handle spoon. And that's it for the top lid there. So now we'll dig into the main compartment and that's all that's left. Okay, so we're just gonna do your typical strap there to access the main compartment. And drawstring. So you probably, you guys have seen quite a, well, it's pretty uh, popular for like ultralighters and stuff like that. Not even necessarily ultralighters to use a trash compactor bag to line their pack. I did that because I don't have um, a pack cover, like a waterproof pack cover. And because this, uh, this mesh pocket out here is so handy for accessing, um, having a pack cover over it uh, would kind of just make it a little bit, it kind of reduced that feature. So this is just a big trash compactor bag uh, that lines everything in here to keep it all waterproof. So everything that goes in here is the stuff that needs to be waterproof. And you saw the stuff on the outside really doesn't matter if it gets wet. My food bag is in a waterproof bag and my rain gear can obviously get wet. Uh, here is my cook kit and I will show you the contents of that later. This here is a little sweater thing uh, for Jack uh, because since he's kind of a short haired dog and he, he can get cold sometimes, especially for sleeping. So I brought that uh, so that he he could have some extra layers at night as well. Um, carry some gloves. Uh, I don't always carry gloves, but given the temperatures and to be expected, it's pretty, a pretty good idea, at least in the Colorado high country, to have some gloves. Spare set of socks. These are some long ski, ski socks. Uh, I mainly use those for sleeping in. This is just a base layer uh, for my top. Uh, merino long underwear for my bottom, so I have a base layer top and bottom if I need extra warmth. And my final insulation layer on top, this is my uh, down puffy jacket. This is my sleeping bag liner. Um, I carry it, it's a silk sleeping bag liner. It gives me a little extra warmth, but it's mainly to keep my sleeping bag clean because it's much easier to wash than my sleeping bag is. This here is my pillow. This is the Nemo, Nemo Philo pillow. Uh, great item. Uh, has like memory foam and it's inflatable. Integrated stuff sack. It's a great little package. Sleeping pad. This is the uh, Thermarest Neo Air All Season. Very warm pad for as small as it packs down to. Expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth the money. And my sleeping bag. This is a Western Mountaineering Antelope five degree bag. Five degrees is a little overkill for where I was going, but it's the lightest sleeping bag I own, so why not take it? And 
I hate being cold at night. I hate not being able to sleep because I'm cold. And with this thing, there's no way I'm going to be cold. The combination of that bag and the Thermarest Neo Air all season is super warm. Uh, I guess I'm just a cold sleeper, but that's my preference. And yeah, this is the last thing. This is my uh, shelter system. This is the Tarp Tent Stratospire 2, uh, which uses my trekking poles to set up. Uh, great little tent. I'm still getting familiar with it. I've done a first impressions video on it, so you can check that out if you're interested. But hopefully over the summer I'll get enough uh, time in it to get a more long-term review. And that's it. That's all the contents of the pack there. Everything else there is just the bottom of the trash compactor bag. So I'll show you. There were a couple items that uh, I need to go through in a little more detail, so we'll show you those next. Okay, so we'll look at my uh, the contents of my cook kit here first. Um, this is just a little mesh sack that came with it um, and a cozy that I made out of Reflectix. This is the uh, Stoic titanium 700 milliliter pot uh, and lid for it and then inside the cook kit here I got a bandana to use for like doing the dishes and whatnot lighter this here is a little uh, insulation pad it's just a piece of cardboard with some uh, foil glued over it uh, to insulate my alcohol stove from the cold ground this is my fuel bottle, three ounces, and this is the alcohol stove that I was carrying in this particular case. I don't think I've shown this one yet, but it's a DIY version of like a fancy feast style. So it's a cat food can with a tomato paste can cut off in it, and then it has a carbon felt around it there. So it's a wick stove, and it, it lights really well. I have to thank uh, Hiram Cook for the idea on that one. And then I have a DIY windscreen here made out of beer cans that locks together. So that there is all the contents of the cook kit. Okay, and last real quick is the food bag. Uh, I carry it in a waterproof uh, dry bag. Uh, that way, you know, on the outside of my pack, it doesn't get wet, and if I have to hang my food overnight for bears, it doesn't get wet, so. It's a good habit. Uh, dinner was going to be some dehydrated chili and I had some nacho cheese Doritos to break up and crumble on that to give it some crunch and some cheese flavor. Um, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to go in any order so we'll just randomly pull out. This is an old coffee bag like from Coffee Beans. Uh, they make a great trash bag because they're really durable and they already smell like coffee, so they smell nice, so that's my trash bag. Uh, had some Gorp for a trail snack, also a Cliff Bar for a trail snack. Breakfast, I uh, normally make oatmeal, but this trip I have a blueberry muffin in this little uh, container here. This happens to be a Talenti gelato container. So uh, it doesn't take up a ton of room, and that way, you know, the muffin doesn't get smashed. And the only other items for this trip were my coffee. This is a Medagliadoro Instant Espresso and a little vial of Scotch Whiskey. So that's the food bag. That's everything. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of the gear, let me know. There'll be a ton of information in the description, like I said. Uh, hope it was helpful for everybody. Thank you for watching.